How's it like being homeless in Portland? <laughs> it's a piece of cake, really. I, I mean, that's why you probably got so many out here because they feed you three meals a day. You don't have to do shit, but stay in your tent or party. Or if you smoke a lot of dope, you can do that. It is the tweet that touched a nerve. Nearly 8 million views and climbing more than a week after that clip was posted on Twitter. And tonight, only on K2, we're hearing from that woman who says homeless people in Portland are being loved to death. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Deborah Knapp. And I'm Rick Gaswood. Steve Dunn is on assignment. That candid conversation shines a spotlight on Portland's homeless crisis. As K2's Angelica Thornton shows us, it's a lot more complicated than a 51-second soundbite. It's like you wake up, you go eat a blanche, get high. Go eat a blanche for lunch, get high. Go eat dinner, get high. And that's all you do all day long, every day. That was Wendy on New Year's Eve, talking about life on the streets of Portland. Hi, Wendy, nice to meet you. We met her five days later in the same spot. Nice to see you. Is it too easy to be homeless in Portland? It can be if, I mean, I've heard of people coming here just for that. You bet. And it wasn't hard to peel back the layers on her message that had since gone viral. Wendy told us it had been misinterpreted as her personal experience rather than her hyperbolic observation of what's happening all around her. People doing whatever they want, whenever they want, and no one is stopping them. She said she doesn't get high all day and have fun. And of course, being homeless is hard. You know, you get to the point where you're tired of being outside. You're tired of being cold. Last night, I couldn't get this tent up for nothing. I couldn't get it to sit up. So I finally went back into this piece of crap and covered up and just prayed to God I'd wake up in the morning because it was really cold last night. I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon. Kevin Dahlgren is the man who interviewed Wendy and tweeted out the conversation. And I've worked for all the agencies that are basically within a uh, half square mile of where we're standing. He works for the city of Gresham doing homeless outreach, but spends most of his free time in Portland representing the nonprofit We Heart Portland. It's an arm of We Heart Seattle, a movement that organizes trash cleanups and offers resources to people in need. Kevin records much of it with his cell phone. So I'm going to venture in just a little bit. From people living in caves on Rocky Butte. We've been out here 10 years. Do outreach workers come by and talk to you? To a man stuck in a snow and ice covered tent in downtown Portland. He says he started sharing it all on Twitter about a year ago because people pay attention to this kind of content. Oh my God, it's growing. And that's the best way to get his message out there. Not just Wendy, but multiple homeless have said that uh, the system is loving us to death, right? They hate the idea that they're being enabled. They may not say no to it, but they still don't like it. What they want is to be empowered. They want responsibility. They even want accountability. Kevin right. says the homeless people he meets are sick of trail mix toothbrushes and disaster blankets. They want real help. Just before you got here, I went in two block radius. I counted 84 camps. 84 camps within two blocks. Completely unacceptable. This is a humanitarian crisis. Why aren't outreach workers out here 24 7, seven days a week, uh, solving this? Right? Where are they? That's what I'm asking. As we interviewed Kevin and Wendy, we had to pause several times. There were people in crisis all around us. Yeah, if you ever find him. Um... That's probably towards us. That was a man throwing a soda bottle at us. Another man screamed in the background, slamming a skateboard into the street. You got to do what you need to do to survive. It's all about survival. And that's Wendy was unfazed because she says it's like this 24-7. People falling apart mentally and physically, like her friend who walked up and asked her for a cigarette with open and possibly infected wounds all over his yeah, face. Yeah. That's okay. You can come back later if you want. Okay? All right. Take care. I don't think anybody could look around our community and say... We don't need more. Scott Kerman is the executive director of Blanche Shea House, the nonprofit often surrounded by chaos in Old Town, the place where Wendy and so many other hungry people get their meals six days a week. You go eat a Blanche, get high. We asked him about Blanche Shea House being mentioned in the tweet thread that was shared around the world. He said Wendy is entitled to her story, but the homeless community is not a monolith. 
we're going to speak for a lot of the other voices who aren't going viral right now. Um, you know, for instance, you know, women who come to us for a meal and we see the fresh bruises and black eyes because they've been beat up overnight or maybe worse. I don't think any of them would say that being homeless is a piece of cake or the, the people who show up at our door and they are covered in their own feces because they've lost control of their bowels and they're desperate because there's no place to clean up outside. Kerman says the tweet only provides fodder for those looking to blame houseless people or nonprofits for the crisis and it's a far more nuanced situation. He says Blanche Shea House does more than just hand out peanut butter sandwiches. It has a network of peer support specialists who team up with other agencies to do outreach in Old Town, connecting people with services and housing, and in some cases, literally saving lives. Last week, one of the peers used Narcan to revive someone who'd overdosed outside. But Kerman says they can't keep up and things are not getting better. As I said before, it feels sometimes like an open air psych ward. Um, and we're not necessarily equipped to serve that, right? We do the best we can trying to serve meals and provide compassion and clothing and other things to people who are often in, in psychotic breaks. Um, and that's not easy. We reached out to Mayor Ted Wheeler's office to ask about outreach in Old Town. They sent us some numbers showing us what navigation teams have been doing since May, including engaging 413 people in the area. A spokesperson told us every one of them was offered an assessment for supportive housing, but only 13 accepted. 61 of the 413 were helped into a shelter, 50 got IDs, 25 got birth certificates, 10 signed up for the Oregon Health Plan, 10 entered substance abuse treatment, and 14 were given housing referrals. The spokesperson told us the numbers are approximate and doesn't include the work being done by the city's newly formed Street Services Coordination Center. And she said more help is on the way after the city council approved a $3.5 million investment for a city employee navigation team proposed by the mayor. We're going to try to get you reconnected to services ASAP. Do you still have your phone with you? Kevin and Wendy say they don't see it. She told us Kevin is the first person who's offered to help her in the six months she's been living in this spot. He got her a phone, is raising money to get her new dentures after her teeth were stolen, and he checks on her every day even tying her shoes. She called him her angel. You see that they're slowly killing themselves and you intervene and you, tr and you, in a very assertive way, find a way to help them. You don't wait for them to ask, right? That's inhumane in my opinion. That approach is one of the reasons Kevin has a lot of critics who accuse him of exploiting the homeless. He told us he's invited those critics to shadow him or help with outreach but they've all refused. I think it really just is uncovering the truth of what's really going on out here. And hopefully this video and others will finally uh, get, say, policymakers to make better decisions about where the money should go. Kevin's plan is to keep ruffling feathers by challenging the status quo and tweeting about it. There is nothing compassionate with allowing people to live on the streets. He says it's worth it when so many lives are on the line.